Hello and welcome back to episode three of the Ignite Mind Body Potential podcast. Thank you so much for coming back and if you're new here welcome this is episode three and we are going to be talking about comparison, feeling of failure and everything that surrounds that basically. (laughs) Um, So over on my Instagram I did give an option of what we should talk about this week and comparison was definitely the most voted so I feel like it's a really good topic for us to talk about and I have a lot to say about it because I feel like comparison and jealousy have been a really integral part of my growth (laughs) and I think that they are an integral part of anyone's growth so we're going to talk about comparison and I guess jealousy today how that can be a good thing how it can be a bad thing and how we can use self-awareness to let it help us grow okay so let's start with comparison and controversially I want to say that comparison can actually be a vital part of your growth and it can actually be a really positive thing. Comparison and jealousy can be an integral part of you growing as a person, achieving what you want to achieve and knowing what you want to achieve. Comparison is actually a very normal part of human cognition and it can be a really, really good thing for self-improvement. When we compare ourselves to others, we get information about what we want, where we want to be and we also get valuable feedback on how we measure up against other people. Like I say, it's a normal part of human cognition, it's how our brain works because way, way, way back when, you would have had to constantly compare yourself to people to know whether you were in a safe environment, to know like where you stood in the community, in your village, in you know, whatever, that's just how we're hardwired as human beings. So the very good thing about comparison linked with self-awareness is that it gives us a really clear indication on what we want in life. So if you see someone achieving something and it makes you feel a little bit jealous or you compare yourself or you think, why have they got that? I really want that. Whether it be a house, a car, a job, a promotion, could be someone that you work with, could be a friend, could be a family member, could be someone you've seen on social media. They get something that your brain goes, oh, gives you that feeling of like a little bit of jealousy, like, oh, why have they got that? Like, I want to be doing that. The good thing about that, if you're self-aware, I would be lying if I said that I had never felt jealous, even now, or a little bit of comparison or seen someone doing something and it makes me go, oh, I'm not doing that or they're further ahead than me. Um, But then your self-awareness needs to kick in. So I'm going to use an example for myself. Um, It would have been about two and a bit years ago now to do with my women's best partnership so this is me being really honest (laughs) I was a women's best affiliate uh, ambassador on just on commission for two and a half years so absolutely loved it was so happy to be a part of the team you know I love women's best wearing it today like I'm always in my women's best use the supplements wear the clothing I've been with them for so long now like four and a half years So I was with them for two and a half years and I saw a girl, similar age to me, someone that I followed in my circle, also with Women's Best, get given a teammate contract, which is like a level up with a salary. And I had this tiny little thing inside of me that saw it and went, oh, I should be there. Caught myself, caught the thought. I was like, no, Taylor, we don't do that. And actually journaled because I was on my self-awareness journey journaled about how amazing that girl must feel how excited she must feel about achieving that that's a massive achievement for her in her career on her timeline and what I said to myself is okay seeing that and seeing her achieve that and seeing her be so excited about that has shown me what I want what my next goal is what my next step is so I journaled about how I would absolutely love to achieve that for myself and I'm so happy for this girl because you know, give her all that excited energy that she, you know, congratulated her, dropped her a message, like genuinely as well. And then uh, I spoke to my athlete manager or my ambassador manager at, at Women's Best and just said, hey, I am really interested in working towards being a teammate. How can I do that? Like, what would my goals be? You know, what do I need to do to get there? Because you also... I was self-aware about the fact I was comparing myself, but then I was being proactive. 
by journaling and also reaching out and saying, how can I work towards that? Not just, I want that, you know? Because that mindset of like, why she got that, I want it, is low frequency energy. We're not about that. So, and I'm not here to take anyone else's success away from them. That girl deserved that. She, that's where she was at. So I messaged them and said, look, I'm really interested in becoming a teammate. How can I achieve that? Anyway, I got a message back and I believe in angel numbers, absolutely love angel numbers, at 11 minutes past 11 in the morning. So 11, 11, my women's best uh, manager texts me saying like, hey Taylor, I've actually been meaning to speak to you. We would love to offer you a teammate contract. Sent me through a contract with a salary and she was already planning to give it to me. Like it was already there for me. And I just feel like that really good energy that I had given to that situation, the universe was like, you know, almost like you, you pass a karmic test of how you're gonna deal with situations. And the fact that that message came through at 11 minutes past 11 was very, to me was very telling of like, here you go, like well done for being a good human being. I don't know, that's just how my brain works, but I think that's a good way to live. So yeah, I got the teammate contract, got the salary, been with them now on, on a teammate contract for two years, or just over two years. Um, I'm so happy and feel really valued by the company and feel like in a really, really good place. Uh, so I think that just goes to show that you, the way that you approach those little feelings of jealousy and comparison are really the decider on the outcome of the situation of your life. If you spend your whole life in victim mode and I wish I had that or must be nice for them, then you're not going to attract any good energy and you're not going to achieve the things that you want to achieve. So another thing that can happen a lot, and this can work both ways, is that either if you're achieving, so we'll talk about it from both ways, but if you're achieving something great and you're in a really good place and you're progressing in life, or someone close to you is in a really good place and progressing in life, it's a lot more common to be jealous of someone or compare yourself to someone who like started in the same place as you with the same circumstances, as you. So let's say, for example, me and another girl went to the same school together, grew up in the same area, lived on the same street, same age. It's a lot easier for me to look at her or her to look at me and think, why she got that? What, like, we came from the same place. So it's a lot easier to be jealous of someone that started off where you did. And that can happen either you're noticing, like, luckily this hasn't happened to me, but in close friendship groups, you're much more likely for your best friend to resent you for doing well than a complete stranger. And that's why I know when a lot of people embark on starting a new business, they'll, there's quotes and stuff going around social media about how they get more support. There's a little white feather floating in front of me. That's amazing. Hello. That's mad. <laughs> okay. Um, you're a lot more likely to, for your best friend to not support you and resent you than a complete stranger. And yeah, I've seen quotes going around social media about why do complete strangers support my, my new business more than my best friend does? That's why. And I'm so grateful that I haven't got that in my friendships because we all support and encourage each other a million percent. But I can see how easily it could happen. And I can see how easily it is to compare yourself to someone who guest started on the same start line as you. And like, oh, why are they doing so much better? Because we're made of the same stuff. We're from the same place. We all had, like, we had the same start in life. So I think it's really important to not be that person, to not resent your friends or closest people to you because they're doing well. Because it's, low, again, low energy frequency. And also to be aware that that could be why someone really close to you isn't supporting you. And remember that that's not a you problem. You shouldn't dull yourself down or, you know, make yourself less to make someone else feel comfortable. That's such an important thing. Don't dull yourself down to make someone else feel more comfortable. Really important. And a lot of our comparison comes from a feeling of failure and not being where we want to be. There's a lot of that, I'll start on Monday, the idea that we need to be a brand new person every week and that we're not where we want to be. And how can we prevent that feeling of failure and that feeling of, I'm not where I want to be and I'm never going to be there and someone else is and they're doing it and they've got it all figured out and 
I don't. <laughs> I'm sure people look at me and think, wow, she's like hyper productive. She knows what she's doing. She's so far ahead. She's doing so well. Yes, I am. But like not every single day and not every hour of every day. And I don't have a absolutely perfect routine structure of every day. And I always think that I should have so much more structure and I should be doing so much more than I'm doing. But your brain can only do so much because especially if you're trying to start your own business or get a promotion at work or just start something new or do a side hustle, whatever it is, it's tiring because it's like, it's mental work. You're also working through limiting beliefs. You're also, there's so many things about starting a business, a side hustle, a, something you want to achieve that is tiring. So it's really important that we understand how we can prevent that feeling of failure or that feeling of not being where we wanna be and how we can actually get there. So this is something that I focus on in my online coaching and something that I focus on myself, long-term sustainable habits. If I have a seven day week and out of that seven day week, I have, I'm gonna work this out. Let's say out of that seven day week, I have a four hours a day I'm gonna actually say an average of three hours a day because I mean I work more hours than that but my like hyper productive time condensed down let's call it three hours a day especially also if you're in a full-time job and you're doing it on the side so let's say three hours a day is 21 hours a week so if you just committed three hours a day to hyper productive time working towards something bettering yourself that over the year is a thousand hours of creativity, productivity, believing in yourself. That all adds up. So day to day, I might feel like I'm not where I wanna be, I'm not achieving enough. But when I do a little bit, little and often, long-term sustainable habits that I'm able to stick to, that's when I do my yearly roundup and I'm like, oh wow, like we did a lot. <laughs> we achieved a lot, we moved forward. Um, it's very, very easy to be so consumed by today or Monday, this week, I've got to do it all. And then it's not sustainable, whether that's a diet or it's exercise or it's a business or it's even just if you're starting out with social media and you say to yourself, right, I've got to post every single day this week. But at the moment, you're not posting at all. And then you're suddenly telling yourself you've got to post every day. At some point, throughout this week or next week you're probably gonna miss a day and then be really hard on yourself and then just stop completely so every time that you decide you want to do something and you want to implement a new habit achieve something be better at something just create a long-term sustainable habit so within my coaching i have ebooks and one of my ebooks that's done really really well is around habit stacking which is a concept that already exists it's not something i made up but I have a really good comparison in there, so I'm going to read it to you. Person A. You're either going to be person A or person B. Person A, this person has decided that they want to start reading before bed, training three days a week in the gym, and drinking three litres of water a day. They're currently not doing any of these things, so they're going to pick one of these things a month, and each time they do that one thing for 30 days, so let's say they're reading before bed for a month, then they will add another thing. So in three months time, they're doing three new things every day and feel amazing. So month one, they're deciding they're gonna drink three, three liters of water a day. Once they've achieved that, month two, they're gonna drink three liters of water a day and read their bed, book before bed. Then month three, they're gonna be drinking three liters of water a day, reading their book before bed, and they're gonna start implementing three workouts a week. So within three months, this person has now solidly implemented three core habits that they were not doing before. Person B, which I think we can all resonate with. This person has decided that they want to start reading before bed, training three days a week in the gym and drinking three liters of water a day. They're currently not doing any of these things. It's Monday and they've said to themselves that they need to do all of these things every day this week. They haven't managed to do them all and feeling really guilty and frustrated with themselves. They throw in the towel, they're no longer doing any of these habits and they're exactly where they started. Who can relate? <laughs> so we can so easily fall into person B 
and think I'm gonna do everything this week. I'm gonna do yoga in the morning, then I'm gonna make the most perfect breakfast ever, then I'm gonna drink three liters of water, then I'm gonna go for a run after work, then I'm gonna work on my new business. <laughs> And then by Wednesday, you're absolutely fucked. <laughs> so you don't go again and you miss things out and you end up doing nothing. And you're looking at someone online, maybe even me thinking, wow, she's doing this, 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 this. No, I'm not. I spread everything out over the week. I might do yoga two days and go to the gym three days and read my book two days and drink my water yeah, to be fair, I'm quite good with water, but do you know what I mean? I spread it out across the week. I don't need to wake up every morning and have the perfect morning every single day because for me personally, it's unachievable and it's not sustainable. I cannot sustain it because life happens and sometimes I wake up more tired. Sometimes I've got urgent work that needs doing. Sometimes I've got a call. Things just come up and my mood ebbs and flows throughout the month and my hormones change throughout the month and I don't sleep as well in the second half of the month because of the stage, for, because of my luteal phase of my period. I have a really disturbed, hectic dream sleep. First two weeks of the month, my sleep is so much better and as in first two weeks of the month of my cycle and I've got way more energy. So you have to understand that you're not always gonna be able to just be consistent month round. I know that I have a predominant female audience on this podcast, so what I will say is, as a woman, genuinely, it is a lot harder to be consistent because when it comes to, if I look at Liam, my partner, who's also a coach, but predominantly coaches men, it's a lot easier for him to set them a meal plan, set them a training schedule, and they can just stick to that for 30 days on the loop. For us as women, uh, our hormones change throughout the month, like I say, our sleep quality changes throughout the month, our temperature changes throughout the month, we're bleeding at some points in the month, we have mood swings, we have different cravings for different food because of our hormones, because of our periods, because of all of these factors, our body fluctuates in weight, my body fluctuates up to like five pounds up and down throughout the month, which is quite a lot, If you, especially if in the past where I was weighing myself every day, but not doing anything different, drinking the same amount of water, eating the same food, exercising the same amount, my weight still fluctuates that much. Because I'm a woman, because my body changes, it looks different throughout the month. Sometimes in the month there's a little bit more bloated, there's a bit more water weight, sometimes I'm leaner, but I'm not changing anything, that's just my body. So as a woman, I know that I'm gonna be more creative at different times of the month, and other times of the month I'm gonna be more tired, it's gonna be harder to do certain things, and since I've actually realized that, I'm a lot nicer to myself and I actually find it a lot easier to be productive without being so hard on myself. So I actually wanna implement um, a little exercise in this podcast. So if you wanna do this in your head or you wanna write it down, maybe just pause it and grab a pen and paper. I want us to do a limiting belief exercise. So I want you to either write down or think of one limiting belief that you might have at the moment. A limiting belief might be, I'll give an example. I need to start my diet tomorrow, exercise five times a week and avoid feeling full. That's a really relatable limiting belief, I think. And then once we have our limiting belief, whatever that is at the moment, your limiting belief might be, I'm not worthy of earning money doing something I love. It could be, I'm not worthy of having a body I feel good in. I'm never gonna lose the weight I wanna lose, I'm never gonna gain the weight I wanna lose, whatever that limiting belief is, because that is a limiting belief. It's not true, it's just what you've decided to be true. I want you to write down or think of a positive affirmation. So, positive affirmation for my, my diet starts tomorrow, exercising five times a week, avoiding feeling full, would be putting this much pressure on myself is unkind. I'm gonna implement a new habit every 30 days and by next year, I'll be doing 12 new things. That's a lot nicer. So when it comes to that Monday pressure of putting a million things on myself and becoming a brand new person, and I don't even know what else, I just say to myself, right, Taylor, putting this much pressure on myself is unkind. I'm gonna implement a new habit every 30 days. And by next year, I'll be doing 12 new things. That's so much nicer to say to myself. And what, what's a year really? To be doing 12 new things in a year, that's all I've done since 2019, so four years ago, I started habit stacking. 
I've ebbed and flowed. Some habits have been really strong at some points and some have gone away and then I've had new habits come in. And But I've always stuck to that habit stacking and a lot of the things that felt difficult to me in 2019 have just become stuff that I do. And then new habits become the difficult thing to start stacking. So that's a really good exercise to do when you have time. Identify your limiting beliefs, create affirmations to convert your limiting beliefs and create some positive, healthy thoughts around your relationship with yourself. Now, comparison and failure generally comes down to not being where we wanna be and being very much in our own heads and doubting ourselves and limiting beliefs. So comparing yourself is linked to your self-worth, it's linked to not being where you wanna be, it's linked to failure, it's linked to um, just being, being in your own head about things, basically. So what are some things that we can do to prevent a feeling of failure, to really implement the things that we want to implement and get to the place we want to get? To-do lists, creating habits, habit stacking, and journaling have been three really vital things for my productivity, for my happiness, for my progress. They're all fundamental things that you can do without any money, like you don't need a fancy to-do list, you don't need a fancy journal, you just need some paper and a pen, or the notes section in your phone, that is my absolute ride or die. On my coaching app, I actually have a habits, habit tracker, so I can write in habits and tick them off every day, which I absolutely love, and my clients really love. But just using the notes in your phone uh, is, is absolutely fine as well. I especially love that when it comes to bedtime and I get into bed, the last thing I do of the day is write my to-do list for tomorrow. All the things that I think I need to do that, I need to do that, I need to do that, could literally be on my to-do list. Sometimes I write, make a coffee, have a shower, make the bed, <laughs> put an outfit on, hoover, clean, put the bedding on to wash, hang the bedding. All those tiny little things that micro things that sit in your brain. Like I need to remember to do that tomorrow. I need to remember to charge my camera. I need to remember to pack that write it down. I literally write a to-do list that's like, put my bags in the car if I'm going somewhere, pack my laptop charger, <laughs> all the tiny little things that I need to remember. And some days I feel like I'm a little less scatty, so I don't need to put, make my coffee, have breakfast and whatever on my list. But most days I do put, have breakfast, have a coffee, have a shower. Because ticking off tasks, releases dopamine in your brain. So when you write stuff down, it allows your brain to stop holding on to all of those little thoughts and it can reduce the feeling of being overwhelmed and it can reduce anxiety. Sometimes I to-do list for the week, so I'm like, I'm gonna do that on Thursday, I'm gonna do that on Friday, just so I know that I've scheduled time to do it and it's not like, oh my gosh, I need to do that, oh my gosh, I need to do that, I must remember that. Constantly trying to hold on to all those little thoughts when we complete individual tasks our brain releases dopamine which is a happy hormone and it causes positive feelings like motivation pleasure happiness it's actually addictive dopamine so the more often that you tick stuff off the more you're going to want to tick things off and then we feel positively motivated to do something not only taking pleasure in completing the task at hand we also attribute positive feelings towards repeating the process so that's why I love writing my to-do list because at the end of the day, even the little things that I've done, I see a big list of ticked off things and I've ticked off everything I needed to do today. Even if those things were like, wash my hair, hoover the house, put the bedding on to wash, plan something for social media, create a graphic, edit podcast. Once I've ticked all of them off and I can see an actual visual list of all the things that I've done today and ticked off everything that was on that list, I feel so good about myself. I could have done all of those things anyway and not tick them off, but then I probably wouldn't have even realised how many things I had achieved today. I might feel like I hadn't really done that much today, but actually all of those things needed doing and I've ticked them all off and now I feel really motivated and positive about myself. I'm far less likely to compare myself to someone else who I think is doing better than me because I can visually see that I had a really productive day and then that leads me on to journaling. If you struggle with stress, depression or anxiety, keeping a journal can be a really good idea. It can help you gain control of your emotions, improve your mental health, 
and not only does it boost memory and comprehension, it also increases working memory capacity, which may reflect improved cognitive processing. So journaling doesn't have to be like, dear diary, today I, you know? Journaling can literally be, I sometimes will just journal bullet points of things I feel really, really positive about, things that I'm working towards. I love writing down stuff that I want to achieve with like dated and then achieving it. I love writing little notes to myself like about times that I have felt so excited about what I'm working towards, almost like little notes to myself that remind me to keep going and remind me of the journey that I'm on and how passionate I am about what I'm creating. Like I journaled about creating this podcast and how excited I was to do it. And that's also a level of accountability because I know that when this podcast is doing really well and that I'm sticking to it consistently week on week, I'll read that back and be like, yeah, we did it. Whereas now that I've written it down, if I wasn't doing it and I read that back, I'd be like, oh, I really should have done that. I really should have committed to that. I really should have been consistent with that. So it keeps me accountable as well. So just finally, I want to finish with one more self-reflection exercise, which is one to four. Probably it's better that you write this down. You could do it in your head. Number one. I want you to write down a thought that you've had recently, either of comparison or pressure that you've placed on yourself. Number two, how did this make you feel? Did you change anything in that moment or on that day because of it? How could you approach this thought or moment of comparison with love and health instead of guilt and shame? It's so easy to default to guilt and shame, to being horrible to ourselves, to talking down to ourselves, to reaffirming to ourselves that we're not good enough, we're not where we need to be, we're never gonna be there. So easy to default to that. So whatever the thought that you had recently of comparison or not being enough, how did it make you feel and how did you approach that? I then want you to write down a sentence that you would say to a friend if they were saying this mean thing to themselves. You might say something like, you're beautiful and worthy, you need to keep going. You don't need to be anyone but the best version of yourself. Say that to yourself. <laughs> the sort of thing that you would say to a friend, say it to yourself. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of the Ignite Mind Body Potential podcast. If you are listening on Spotify or Apple, I would love for you to rate the podcast and subscribe. And if you are watching on YouTube, I'd also love for you to subscribe and hit the like button. Um, I really enjoy talking about this because it's very relevant to my growth and experience in becoming a business owner, running a business, believing in myself, earning money, doing something that I love. I've come up against so many limiting beliefs and comparison and jealousy and applying self-awareness to those things. It's been a really integral part of my growth. I hope to see you next week. Thank you so much for listening. And yeah, I'll see you soon.